right, so today we're talking about rates. And a rate is very different to a ratio. So remember with a ratio we're comparing two or more quantities with the same units. But with rates we are compar comparing only two quantities and they, can, they do have different units. And they can be measuring completely different things. So metres per minute, metres is a measure of distance and minutes is a measure of time. Completely different. And we have in the middle here a slash which is per. All right, so that's metres per minute. All right, we'll explain what that means as we're going on. And this one is dollars per hour. All right, so in this first question, we're writing the units suitable for each rate. Now, this one's a little bit tricky, so I'm going to lead you through this. But a typing speed, how quickly you can type, is normally done in how many words you can type in one minute. So when we talk about how many words you can type in one minute, that would be measured in words per minute. So somebody who's got a really good typing speed would do 60 words per minute. That's one word per second, pretty quick. All right, a person's wage. Now a wage earner gets paid by the hour and money is measured in dollars. So our, his wage is in dollars and it's per hour. That, he's measured, that he is paid in. Okay, next one. We're writing each statement as a simplified ratio. Sorry, that should be rate. I've written the wrong thing there, so let's fix that up. As a simplified rate. Okay, so when they give you two different things like this, the first one goes on the top of the fraction. So we write 51 sheep up there. The second one they mentioned goes on the bottom of the fraction, three hours, and we can use the abbreviation H for hours. Now, that's in case, sometimes like the question might say at the end, give your answer in hours per sheep. Probably wouldn't, but if it did, the hours would be on the top and the sheep on the bottom. But if they don't say anything, first thing goes on the top, second thing goes on the bottom. So now you put this in your calculator, so you're just pressing fraction key, 51 over 3 equals, and you will get 17 as your answer. Then on the end, you write sheep per hour, like this. Sheep per hour. All right, the next one is $126. That's the first thing that goes on the top. Second thing is 12 hours. That goes on the bottom. And then we go to our calculator and we type in 126 over 12 using your fraction key and press equals. Now when you get that answer, it's going to be written as a fraction. But money must be as a decimal. Anything to do with money must be a decimal. Okay, so you're going to then press the SD key to make sure you get a decimal as your answer. All right, and if you do that, we're going to end up with one, I'm trying to do this in my head, sorry, 0 0.5. Now, that decimal has to be for money, and we're doing dollars, so dollar sign always goes at the front. And for our decimal, it must be in two decimal places for money. So we need a second decimal place here. So we're going to fill that in with a zero. So we've got $10.50. Okay, next one. We're doing the cost of sending a 5.5 kilogram parcel, which is $88. Now we're doing the postage rate. All right, so it's a postage rate. So on the top we want our money, how much it's costing us, $88. And on the bottom we want how many kilograms we have, so it's 5.5 kilograms. Okay, now our dollar sign goes at the front, it's the only unit that goes at the front. And now we're going to use our calculator, just wait a second till I get mine. All right, so you're going to put this in your calculator fraction key, just like we did with the other ones, and let's see what we end up with. 
So on the top of our fraction, we have 88, and on the bottom of our fraction, we have 5.5. So it looks like that, press equals, and it gives you straight out a 16. So it's 16 dollars per kilogram on the end. Okay, so as I said, dollars is the only unit that goes at the front of the number. All right, looking at the next question. We're using words, in your own words. Explain what is meant by each rate. Okay, so if we have 100 kilometres per hour, what they really mean is that we, you travel 100 kilometres every hour. That's what it means. Okay, so you go 100 kilometres in one hour, or 100 kilometres every hour. You can say in one hour if you like. Okay, let's look at the next one, petrol consumption. Now this becomes important when you go to buy a car. You want the car to have good petrol consumption because you're constantly filling it up with petrol and that costs you money. So what this means is that it's going to, you, this tank of petrol is going to take 10.3 litres for you to travel 100 kilometres. All right, so it takes 10.3 litres to travel, I might just write an equals in front of those, to travel 100 kilometres. Or for every 100 kilometres, you would have to put 10.3 litres of petrol in the tank. Okay, let's look at the next question. A lift should carry no more than 1,600 kilograms or 20 people. If you ever get in a lift or an elevator, have a look and they'll always tell you how much the lift can cope with. What is this weight allowance in kilograms per person? Now, if they give you units like this, we're going to make sure we use that hint. The first thing they've said is kilograms, so we want the number of kilograms on the top of our fraction, and on the bottom of the fraction, we want that second unit, which is people or persons. So we've got 20 people. So now you just go to your calculator and you put your 600 over 20 in your calculator and you'll end up with 80. Then on the end, you're going to write new units. So it's kilograms per, now we're not going to write people because it wouldn't make any sense, it's per person. So in other words, for them to come up with this idea, they're working on the fact that on average people would be about 80 kilograms for one person. Okay, now if somebody got in the lift and they were very, very big, and they might be 120 kilograms, that would be okay because there's probably a lot of, you know, a number of people that would get in that would be less than 80. But if you had, you know, a big rugby union team and they all got in the lift together, and they were all about 100 kilograms, then you don't want 20 people in your lift, okay? And probably that wouldn't fit anyway. All right, let's look at the next question, number six. All right, so in number six, it says the cost of 53 litres of petrol is $73.67. Express this cost in cents per litre. Now that's your hint. So cents goes on the top, of the fraction and litres goes on the bottom. So we're going to write, now that's not cents, we'll deal with that in a minute, and, but we're going to put our litres on the bottom, 53 litres. Now, they want cents on the top, not dollars. Okay, so you need to convert those dollars into cents. So how do we convert from dollars to cents? We're going to a smaller unit, so we're times in. And there's 100 cents in a dollar, so we times it by 100. So if you do 73.67 times 100, you get 7,367 cents. On the bottom, we have 53 litres. And now we're going to put this in our calculator fraction key and see what we end up with. So fraction key, top of your fraction will be 73.67, and on the bottom, 53, and press the equals, and we end up with 139. So we've got 139, and then on the end we write cents 
per litre. Now it's important you know that, okay, because that's the way petrol stations normally tell you the price of petrol. All right, so they say 139 cents per litre. Some of them might say $1.39 per litre, depends on the petrol station. But some of the petrol stations have been caught out for, you know, charging people too much money. So it's a good thing that you know how to do this sort of thing. All right, so if you've got your calculator on your phone or whatever, it's a good idea to just double check. Well, I just bought 53 litres of petrol. They told me it was 139 or $1.39 per litre. I'll just check. Oh, yes, they've charged me $73.67. That's correct. Okay, so double check because that's the only way that people find out that it's not actually working properly at the Bowser. It's turning over wrongly. Is only because a few people have checked the maths of it. All right, let's look at number seven, a complaints hotline. Took 2,190 calls in one year. Calculate the number of calls per month. Make sure you're looking at these units. All right, so we want calls on the top of the fraction. That's the first thing. And then on the bottom, the other thing they've told you is one year. So we're going to put that on the bottom. But that's not what we want, is it? We don't want calls per year. We want calls per month. So we're going to keep the calls on the top because that's fine. But on the bottom, we want this written in months. So what is one year in months? A lot of you know that's 12 months, but I know you do. So we're going to write it down. But if you didn't, you'd go, all right, I'm going from years to months. You might have said, you know, in three years or something. You're going from years to months, you're going to a small unit. So you times by, there's 12 months in a year. So you would be doing one times 12 to get your 12 down there. So now we're going to put this into the calculator fraction key. Let's see what the calculator gives us. So 2190 on the top. And on the bottom we want 12, and then going press equals, and that's what it gives us. We're not going to give that answer, are we? So we'll press our SD button here. Press it. And it gives you that. So we're going to write that answer down because it looks like it makes a bit more sense to what we're doing. 182.5. Oh, sorry, 182.5. And then we write calls per month. Okay, so I don't think this works very difficult. It's really only one or two lines of working and then the answer. So you should be doing two, at the most three lines of working to get all of these questions out. So good luck with your homework, boys.